Right, let's now take a closer look at question seven that applies ideas of trigonometry. It's coming from the metric paper of 2022, paper two. Let's check it out. So AB is a vertical flagpole that is scored five P meters long. AC and AD are two cables anchoring the flagpole. B, C, and D are in the same horizontal plane. B, D equals to 2 P meters. Angle A, C, D equals to X. And angle A, D, C equals to 45 degrees. All right. Now, uh, 7.1 says determine the length of A, D in terms of P. Okay. So where is AD? I think AD is this line over here. We're interested in finding the length of that line. Now remember, in these kinds of questions, all you need is a triangle that you can work in. So if I look at that line AD, it happens to be a member of two triangles, triangle ABD and triangle ACD. So if I just pay attention to triangle ABD, which happens to be a right angled triangle, and I'm talking now about this triangle over here, okay? If I just Zoom in on this one, just this one, okay? I've got two things here. I need to have three things for me to be able to do anything. That's what you need to know. You pick a triangle, and after you've picked the triangle, it must have a minimum of three things for you to be able to do anything on it. It turns out we've got here a value of the length of this particular side. We've got also that particular side, and we've got an angle of 90 degrees. So that makes it three things there. If you've got three things, you've got enough to do anything on that triangle. So I'm going to yeah, use uh, the theorem of Pythagoras, because if you've got two sides, and you're looking for the third one, you can use Pythag. All right, let's go and use Pythag here. What do we have? So I'll just quickly redraw the triangle. Just looking at it now straight, we've got 2p here, and then we've got square root 5p here. We're looking for that. For three things there, we're looking for the third one. Okay, so ad squared, that's what Pythag would have said, will be equals to uh, root 5p squared plus 2p squared. Okay, Pythag. I was there when Pythag got to set this. Okay, so so um, the first one, square root 5p, gives us just 5p squared. And the second one gives me 2 plus 2 times 2 is 4, so we're going to get 4p squared. I'm getting 9p squared. And I think if you just try and take the square root of uh, 9p squared, because we're looking for the length of AD and not AD squared, and AD comes out exactly as 3p meters, okay? 3p meters. Right, next question. 7.2 says, show that the length of CD equals 3p into sine of x plus cos of x divided by the square root of 2 multiplied by the sine of x. <laughs> okay, now, if you look at uh, the diagram, we are interested in finding the length of CD. So you have to find the triangle in which this CD is found, okay? Now I'm going to say, let's highlight the triangle in green. I'm looking at uh, this here, and then I'm going this way here, and then I'm going to go back to the one CD, so I'm going to go back to this here. So the green triangle is a triangle that you are facing, okay, the triangle that you're looking at now. What do we know about this triangle? We know it's got an X here, which is the angle that you have at the bottom. We also know that it's got 45 degrees here, which is the other angle on the other corner. Um, we know we just found that this has a length of 3P, so do I have three things? With sides and angles included, yes, I've got a side and two angles. So I have to know which of the two rules I can use between the sine rule and the cosine rule. Okay, very important. Now, remember it's x and 45. It's a, c, and d. Okay, so let's try and reconstruct that so we can be able to look at it much closer. a, c, and d. Okay, so a here, c is here, d is here. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for this length. They give us an angle of x here, they give us 45 degrees here, and we just found for ourselves that the length of AD is going to be 3P. So I think that the ideal rule to use in this case will have to be the, the sine rule. I've got that kind of a situation here of a side and an angle opposite to it, and I can also find the value of angle A because we need that in order to compute the length of CD. So by using geometry, we can agree that the value of the angle that you're looking at, which happens to be angle A here, will just be 180 degrees minus uh, 45 plus x, okay? Minus 45 degrees uh, plus x. That's what the value of that angle is going to be, and this is because of interior angles of a triangle. So angle A is equal to 180 degrees minus 45 degrees plus x, and this is because of interior 
angles of a triangle. It's important for you to continue arguing uh, these kinds of statements because this is based on a geometric theorem and we want you to always, always make sure that you do that with an axiom for that matter. Okay, so now um, I'm going to go back to trying to see what the sine rule is going to say here. The sine rule says uh, CD over the sine of the angle opposite to CD, which happens to be angle A, should be equal to AD over the sine of the angle opposite to that particular angle, which happens to be angle C. So that's what the sine rule says. So CD, okay, over the sine of the angle opposite to that happens to be 180 degrees minus the sum of 45 and x. I'm deliberately keeping it this way because I'm going to take advantage of the, uh, um, what's the reduction for Milesia. I'm going to use the fact that sine of 180 minus anything is the same as the sine of that thing. Okay, very important. Now, AD comes out as 3P. We are dividing this by the sine of the angle. What angle is this? That's angle X. Okay, that's angle C, which has a value of X. So, so like I said, I said I'm taking advantage of reduction for Milesia. So, according to my reduction for Milesia, so I'm going to have CD over the sine of 45 degrees plus x equals to 3p divided by the sine of x. And then I think I'm going to multiply both sides by the sine of the denominator. Uh, then that means cd will be equal to 3p times the sine of 45. I'm literally multiplying here by this. Okay. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to expand it because it's actually important for us to make note of that because uh, sine of x, 45 degrees plus x, can be rewritten as uh, sine of 45 cos of x plus cos of 45 sine of x. This is according to your knowledge of compound angles divided by the sine of x. Now, at the top, sine of 45 is uh, root 2 over 2. It's a very special number. So we've got 3p multiplied by, if you look at it, it's actually root 2 over 2 times cos sine of x plus cos of 45 is also root 2 over 2 times the sine of x. And everything here, beautiful people, is divided by the sine of x. So now, just looking at what we're trying to get to and what we have, they want us uh, to have only 3p on top. So we need to factor out uh, the root 2 over 2. I'm going to factor out the root 2 over 2. Let's see what happens when you factor out the root 2 over 2. Uh, when I factor out root 2 over 2 here, I will end up with... Uh, root 2 over 2 going out, it's going to leave me with exactly 3p um, root 2, okay? Uh, divided by, the 2 is going to go to the denominator, that's root 2 over 2 there, and I have cosine of x plus sine of x inside the brackets, okay? Now, what they want us to have doesn't have a 2 on the denominator, but it has a root 2. So, when you change, okay? 2 and write it as root 2 over root 2. You're going to have something that looks like this, okay? Let's have it here. It's going to say CD equals to, at the top, I've got 3P times root 2 multiplied by cos of X uh, plus sine of X. And then on the denominator, I've got 2, which can be written as root 2 times root 2. 2 times root 2 times root 2 is 2. And then I'm sitting with sine X here. So the root 2s cancel out. And then eventually I'm left with 3p into the cosine of x plus the sine of x divided by just one of those root 2s remaining because only one got cancelled out. This is only one that got cancelled out. I'm left with just one of them. And then that has to be divided by uh, root 2 multiplied by the sine of x. Maybe if you can just write much more neater so people can read what we have over, over here. Okay. This is what they wanted us to prove. Indeed, it is what they wanted us to prove. So we have successfully proven the value of CD. Now in closing, they say, if it is further given that P is equal to 10 and X is equal to 110, calculate the area of triangle ADC. We want to find the area of the triangle, okay? We want to find the area of the triangle. Now, uh, CD, this is tri triangle ADC is the same triangle we were talking about now. Triangle ADC is the same triangle we were talking about now. It's got A here, it's got C here, it's got D here, okay? If I connect them, um, <coughs> I remember this was 3p, and then remember this was x, and then uh, this is actually a here, we've got c, we've got d here, we have 45 degrees here, okay? So we, we've, we've got the value of the angle. We just found the length of this cd as something very hectic, which was 3p uh, 
multiplied by the cosine of x plus the sine of x, and then everything divided, of course, by uh, the denominator that we had, which was just the square root of 2 multiplied by uh, the sine of x. So this is the triangle that we're interested in. We want to find the area of this triangle. According to the area rule, you can be able to find the area of the triangle if you've got two sides. If you've got the side and you've got another side and the included angle, the angle that is included between those two sides. So I'm just going to use that. I'm going to say, okay, the area of this triangle, uh, ADC, is going to be equal to half AB sine C. My A is going to be one length, my B is going to be the other length, and then sine of the angle between them, which happens to be 45 degrees. So I want the actual lengths of these things, because we have worked out what uh, P, we've been told, in fact, what P is. So if P is 10, it means 3 times P is going to be 3 times 10, which is going to give me uh, 30. That's this side here. Okay, it's 3 into 10. It's going to give me a length of 30 units. And similarly, by substituting P, this side, and then substituting the angle X, we will be able to get what the answer is going to be there. Um, I think I, it's going to be just, um, let's see, 3 times 10 times the cosine of uh, 45 plus the sine of 45. Uh, is that, no, it's not 45, it's 110. The angle is 110. Let's get that 110 uh, correctly. 45 is the other angle that we have there. Okay, very important. We were told that X is 110. So it's 3 times 10 times uh, cos of 110 degrees plus sine of 110 degrees. And then everything is divided by the square root of 2 multiplied by the sine of 110 degrees, okay? So once you do this and you try and figure out what the length of this is going to be, it's usually uh, easier, of course, to work this out if you're having a calculator. You substitute in your calculator there, um, you'll be able to get the correct answer. Since 110 is not a special angle, you can't be able to figure out what the answer is going to be if um, you try and do it without a calculator. So it's important for you to make sure that you can use a calculator because 110 is not a special angle. You'll have to compute it with a calculator without any shadow of a doubt. So it turns out that you will be able to get the length here coming out as just 13.49. And if I have that 13.49 subbed here as my other side and then work out the area, uh, I will be able to get what the area of the triangle they're looking for is. Uh, it's not going to be very complicated, I think. Uh, we will agree that we know how to compute in our calculators, then the area is going to come out as 143.11 uh, square units. I think the units I'm having here is meters, so we can say uh, meters squared. And this is how you can integrate these ideas to try and find the area uh, on top of all the things that you've done when you're dealing with 3D questions of trigonometry.